One of the most common complaints I'll see about Wayland is Wayland does not support network transparency and it never will. Usually those people link you to the Wayland FAQ. Is Wayland network transparent? Does it support remote rendering? No, that is outside the scope of Wayland. And sometimes they'll send you over to a Mark Shuttleworth blog from 2010. We don't believe X is set up to deliver the user experience we want with super smooth graphics and effects. I understand that it's possible to get amazing results with X, but it's extremely hard and it isn't going to get easier. Some of the core goals of X make it harder to achieve these user experiences on X than on native Geo. We are choosing to prioritize the quality of experience over those original values like network transparency. Now, I'm very skeptical of how many people actually rely on X network transparency. I'm almost certain that some of them do, but considering that there's a lot of programs like Firefox, for example, which do not play nicely with it whatsoever, I have my doubts. But let's just say that every single person who says it's really important, it's actually really important, and they do use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Wayland supports network transparency. It's different than the way it works on X, but it is there. And I really want this myth that Wayland doesn't support it to die, and I never hear about it again. But before we get to that, I'm sure a lot of you have just never heard the term network transparency. Or you may have heard the idea, but it was described with a slightly different term. So nowadays when you run your system, most people are running and rendering an application on a single computer. Say for example, Emacs. You start Emacs on the computer and then you use Emacs from the same computer. But this is not the only way that X works, and X actually wasn't primarily used in this way when it was first being developed. It was developed at MIT, where you'd have a big mainframe computer, and then different terminals would network into that computer. Those terminals didn't have the ability to run a full X server themselves. So that big computer, it would run the X server, it would run the application, and then the graphical interface you would render on a completely separate computer over the network. X can be controlled transparently over the network, X is network transparent. But while this is not the way that most people are running X nowadays, the idea of running an application over the network, that's not gone away. This idea probably sounds awfully familiar to say, Microsoft's remote desktop, or any desk, or how about game streaming services like Steam, PlayStation, or Xbox Remote Play. Whilst the tech behind these solutions works fundamentally differently, they are all different names for the same underlying concept, rendering over the network. So, back to Wayland. Wayland does support remote rendering. Most people just don't read past this first line. To support remote rendering, you need to define a rendering API, which is something I've been very careful to avoid doing. The reason Wayland is so simple and feasible at all is that I'm sidestepping this big task and pushing it to the clients. It's an interesting challenge, a very big task, and it's hard to get right, but essentially orthogonal to what Wayland tries to achieve. This doesn't mean that remote rendering won't be possible with Wayland. It just means that you'll have to put a remote rendering server on top of Wayland. One such server could be the Xorg server, but other options include an RDP server, remote desktop protocol, a VNC server, virtual network computing, or somebody could even invent their own new remote rendering model, which is a feature when you think about it. Layering Xorg on top of Wayland has very little overhead, but the other types of remote rendering servers no longer require Xorg, and experimenting with new protocols is easier. So, with VNC, this came out of the Olivetti and Oracle Research Lab in 2002. The original implementation was under the GPL, and many of the modern server implementations are also under the GPL as well. Also, it is nice and platform independent. So if you start using VNC on Linux, there are clients on Linux, there are clients on Windows, there are iOS clients, there are macOS clients, and pretty much anything else you could want, there is probably a client for. As for RDP, this is a little bit different. This is a proprietary protocol coming out of Microsoft. So the main implementation, you know, it's proprietary. However, that doesn't mean that people don't want to use RDP. There is also free RDP, which is a 
free implementation, licensed under the Apache license. If you're using RDP on Linux, this is almost certainly what you're using. Okay, that's great and all, but how does that actually help me? Well, because these servers already exist and have existed for a couple of years now. For example, GNOME Remote Desktop, remote desktop server which allows you to connect to your machine remotely. This is both an RDP server and a VNC server. If you're not using GNOME though, you're not out of luck. For example, if you're on WL Roots, you can use Way VNC, a VNC server for WL Roots based Wayland compositors. This is not going to work with GNOME, this is not going to work with KDE, this is not going to work with Western, this is just for WL Roots, so things like River, Sway, and things like that. And then there are also things like Waypipe, Network Transparency with Wayland. Waypipe is a proxy for Wayland clients. It forwards Wayland messages and serializes changes to shared memory buffers over a single socket. This makes application forwarding similar to SSH-X feasible, and the way you interact with it works in a relatively similar way to SSH as well. As for a KDE-specific solution like the GNOME Remote Desktop, Right now, I don't think that exists, at least as like a core part of KDE. If someone knows otherwise, please do let me know. And if it doesn't exist, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that starts to exist around KDE 6 as Wayland becomes a lot more of a focus. Now, I know someone's going to say, but aren't those solutions bad? Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I don't know when you're watching this video. Right now, though, they do absolutely have some problems. For example, there was this post from 10 months ago. Uh, with the GNOME Remote Desktop, apparently at the time, and I don't think it has yet, it doesn't have remote login support. So if the desktop isn't already logged in, you can't log in to the desktop. This makes it unusable if you forget to log in. That's a problem. Also, it does require a GNOME extension to make it work properly after logging in. Yes, absolutely a problem, but it is there, and these are problems that can be fixed. Those are things that you as a user can do, but if you're a developer of a Wayland compositor, there is another option. It is also possible to put a remoting protocol into a Wayland compositor, so you can have free RDP as a part of your compositor. You can have a VNC server or whatever thing you want to support, either a standalone remoting compositor or as a full part of the full desktop compositor. This will let us forward native Wayland applications. The standalone compositor could let you log into a server and run an application back on your desktop. Building the forwarding into the desktop compositor could let you export or share a window on the fly with a remote Wayland compositor, for example, a friend's desktop. As that would be a fairly big undertaking, I wouldn't expect most desktops to do it outside of the really big ones like GNOME, KDE, or System76's Cosmic. But if you want to do it and, you know, you want to run a dumb little experiment, you want to just see how it works, absolutely possible and you can make it happen. And then you can say we have native network transparency at the core compositor level. Have these RDP and VNC servers been developed as much as X11 network transparency? Probably not, especially when we're dealing with some of these smaller implementations. Maybe there's like a team of three developers who've worked on it and maybe it has some bugs and maybe it's laggy and maybe it crashes and maybe it doesn't work anywhere near as well as you want it to be working. But that's not the point I'm trying to make here. It's fine if it's buggy, because bugs can be dealt with. To say that Wayland does not support network transparency is an absolute lie and a complete myth. It does, it's just a work in progress. And if for your use case, X11 network transparency works considerably better, go and use it. That's totally fair, it's your system, do what you need to do. But Wayland does support network transparency, and it is getting slowly better over time. Also, it's fair to say that a lot of the tools that rely on X11 network transparency will not work with these newer solutions. So you will need to change up the tooling you're using, and a lot of tools like AnyDesk, for example, don't currently support Wayland. I would like them to, and hopefully one day they will, but if that's something you desperately need, 
I can totally see why you would use X as well. So let me know your thoughts. Do you rely on network transparency? Do you make use of VNC or RDP on a daily basis? Do you think the state it's in is currently good? And have you used network transparency on the Wayland side? I would love to know. So if you like this video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly, Barrow, Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Bugs.